This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Welcome back. This is Chrysler 46RE Class Part 1 Lesson 3, the final video of the transmission teardown. If you'll recall, in our last lesson, we removed a few external assemblies, separated the overdrive section from the main case, and completely disassembled the overdrive section. In this lesson, our goal is to move forward and disassemble the main case area of the transmission. Begin by turning the case over onto its side. Use a 13 millimeter or half inch 3 8 drive socket, extension and ratchet to remove the 14 pan bolts. Place them with the other small parts in the box. Remove the pan. Turn it over and confirm that a circular magnet is present in this area. The magnet in your pan will probably have a lot of debris as well as a thick black paste surrounding it. For now, leave it as is without an attempt to clean it. Set it onto the bench. If the Panda Case gasket is still on the case, remove it now. You may find a reusable type or one made from cork or other disposable material. Regardless of type, save it. Set it onto the pan rail. As I said before in past lessons, Save everything until the entire project is finished. There are 10 bolts of various lengths which fasten the valve body to the case. Use a 7 16 inch or 11 millimeter 3 8 drive socket and ratchet to remove them.
There are three different links. I'll discuss where each of them go during part two, but for now, place them into the box. The valve body is ready to be removed, but it may not be completely free of the case. Lightly tap on the case connector with a hammer to break it free of built up dirt. Now you can remove it. Turn the valve body over and rotate the selector shaft back to the park position. This moves the neutral safety switch cam closer to the casting to minimize the chance of breaking it as you handle this assembly. Note how the case connector is fastened to the casting by only one bolt through a slotted hole. This allows it to float as needed to align it with the hole in the case. It's somewhat fragile and this is why you should tap it free with a hammer. It could break in this area if you don't. Set the valve body carefully into the pan. Use a three quarter inch box end wrench to loosen the band adjustment bolt lock nut. Use a 5 16 inch or 8 millimeter open end wrench or on later models a Torx bit socket and ratchet to loosen the bolt. Continue to back out the bolt until this band apply strut and the anchor strut can be removed. Place them with the other small parts. Now remove this accumulator spring, accumulator piston, and another spring under the piston if it is present. Not all transmissions have a spring under the piston. Set them onto the bench. Remove the seven pump to case bolts with a half inch or 13 millimeter 3 8 drive socket, extension, and ratchet.
place the bolts into the box. Don't be concerned about mixing the bolts together. We'll identify and sort them out during reassembly in later lessons. Two of the bolt holes here and here are tapped in order to attach a slide hammer allowing you to force the pump housing out with a few blows from the slide. Another easier method to force the pump out is to use a large flathead screwdriver and pry between the direct clutch drum and the drive shell. Pry in separate areas. It will come out. Now you can finish pulling it out by hand. Turn it over and confirm that this plastic thrust washer remained here on the pump housing. Set it onto the bench like this. And place a tool like so to prevent it from rolling off of the bench. If the pump to case gasket remains stuck to the case, remove it now. If you have to, wear gloves and use a razor blade to scrape it free in one piece. Set it onto the pump. Remove the forward and direct clutch drums by grasping the input shaft and pulling it out. Set them onto the parts bench. Use a pick to remove a bronze type three tab thrust washer from a pocket in the forward drum. Or if it remained here on the intermediate shaft, remove it. There will also be a circular hardened race between the thrust washer and the shaft. Set both of them into the box. Remove the kick down band. Place it around the drums. Use snap ring pliers to remove this snap ring. Put it with the other small parts. Remove the forward planetary gear set and ring gear. There will be three parts which come out together. The forward planet carrier which supports the pinion gears. A metal thrust washer and the outer ring gear. Note that on 47 and 48 RE models, the forward planet carrier is made of steel and there will be a Teflon insert, which looks like this, between the carrier and ring gear. Be sure to keep it with and in place between the two parts so that you don't lose it. 
set them onto the bench with the planet carrier facing down. Remove a multi-tab metal thrust washer next. Depending on model, it may have three or as many as six tabs. Pull out the drive shell and sun gear assembly. Set them down in the order removed onto the forward ring gear. Now remove another metal thrust washer. Depending on model, it may have three or more tabs. Pull the rear planetary gear carrier out. Place these parts as removed onto the drive shell and sun gear. Pull out the output ring gear. There should be a hardened steel thrust washer present in front of the gear. Place the washer and ring gear over the rear planet carrier. Use snap ring pliers to spread and remove this retainer. Use a pick to remove a one or two tab metal or plastic thrust washer. Now rotate and remove the reverse drum. Set the retainer, thrust washer, and reverse drum over the output ring gear. Carefully remove the plastic roller and spring cage assembly using two hands. Set it onto the bench. In order to remove the reverse band, remove a strut located between the apply lever and the band anchor lug. To do this, 
push down on the band and push the strut out. Place it into the box. Rotate the band to free the other lug from the anchor assembly and slide it out of the case. Set it around the reverse drum. Remove the intermediate shaft by pulling it out. It is not uncommon to find this shaft seized or impossible to pull out because of a damaged housing. It's caused by lack of lubrication and heat. If this is your case and it will turn, try tapping it out with a section of 2 before. If the shaft cannot be removed this way, leave it as is for now. This shaft comes out easily. Set it onto the bench. Reposition the case with the bell housing downward. Use a 3 8 inch 6.38 drive socket and ratchet to remove the six bolts which attach the overdrive piston housing to the main case. Place them here. Return the case onto its side. Use the section of 2 before to tap the housing from the case. Never directly strike the housing with a metallic tool. The soft aluminum will easily mushroom and destroy the snap ring groove. If the intermediate shaft has stubbornly remained in the housing, hit the shaft to force both of them from the case. At this point, set the housing onto the parts bench. However, if the shaft still remains in this part, not only will the housing have to be replaced, but you will also have to destroy it in order to free the shaft. You will need to use a hacksaw to cut away the housing. Make two cuts directly opposite each other almost all the way through to the shaft. You can then strike it with a hammer to crack it in half, breaking it free of the shaft. You can then remove any smeared aluminum from the journals with 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. The journals of the intermediate shaft are extremely hard 
and usually clean up very well. Even if you had to cut it off, set the pieces onto the bench. Use a long thin screwdriver and hammer to gently tap the shaft which locates the reverse anchor assembly and lever almost all of the way out. Notice the two O-rings which seal the shaft to the case. They will be replaced later. Hold all the components with one hand as you pull the shaft completely out. Replace the shaft into the assembly like so. Set them together onto the bench. The final steps of the transmission disassembly are about removal of the servo assemblies in the case. Before we begin, let me remind you to wear eye protection. Both servos are under spring tension. If you haven't already done so, put your safety glasses on now. You should also wear thick gloves to protect your fingers and hands. The reverse servo snap ring and retainer are not under a lot of tension. Place one hand over the retainer as you pry out the snap ring with a small screwdriver. The reverse servo consists of the snap ring, spring retainer, large return spring, and finally a piston assembly. Place them together onto the bench as removed. Rotate the case and move the kick down lever out of the way. Use wide mouth welders vise grip pliers or a valve spring compressor tool to compress the servo cover. You only need to depress it about an eighth of an inch. Remove the snap ring with a small screwdriver. Release the pliers as you place a hand over it. The cover is under spring tension and may come up out of the bore. If it doesn't, tap it with the end of a ratchet to dislodge it. There are four main parts to the assembly. A snap ring, cover,
large return spring and the piston and a ply pin. Set them together as removed onto the bench. Well, that's about it for this lesson and part one of the class. We've reached our goal to remove everything from the case and to place parts and subassemblies neatly onto another bench. In part two, we'll move forward with an introduction to overhaul kits and other replacement parts, discover why this transmission failed as we work on the sub.